and welcome to my video. This is part three of three parts and um, I premiered part two today and it seems to be going okay but I, now I've been looking at the picture I think well actually it's not quite um, you know it's not, it's not dramatic enough so uh, I obviously have to do something about it so um, let's just put a little tester up there I think that's going to be dark enough I'm just going to go for it and um, I intended this just to be a, a glazing video, but I don't think it is going to be necessarily just glazing. It's going to be a, a whole load of quite um, big changes. I quite like that blue. That's phthalo blue, which I've used uh, throughout. But uh, This is straight from the tube. Um, and I'm going to put some Payne's grey in it and maybe some red in a moment. I just want to sort of just sort of make a few marks to get into the mood. When I when I paint, if I'm if I'm painting just for my own enjoyment, then I can listen to any music that I like. I can just set it going on the on my computer. Excuse all the clattering. This is uh, me moving stuff around here, uh, and I can just listen to it. But of course, if I'm making a video I've got to be careful I can't have any background music um, you know that I don't have a license for even if there's a hint of something playing in the background uh, they can block the soundtrack uh, if they think that you haven't bought the license so I, I can't I can't do that I mean I could do it I suppose and then put in the voice stuff afterwards but Quite frankly, I think you lose something in that. I mean, I would get my voice in slightly better condition. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I could, well, I mean, I can edit, I can edit what I'm saying uh, now. I'm wearing a, you know, wearing a clip-on microphone. It seems to be quite good quality. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, sometimes, you know, I've sat there with my microphone after the event. In other words, I've made the video and I'm thinking, now, what shall I do? This is what I used to do in the past, anyway. I, I think, now, what am I going to talk about? I can, I can pretty well remember everything I did in the painting, obviously, and I can predict what's going to happen next because it's fresh in my mind. But when it's, um, um, it's just not quite the same, you know, I, I suppose... In some ways, it's almost too uh, too controlled. I don't know. Uh, the thing about painting to music is that I I suppose it relaxes me more, and I can really just sort of go to town with it and just have fun. Anyway, I decided that the the sky was just too white and blue. Um, it's still going to be white and blue, but it's I'm just going to sort of up up the drama a bit, or even a lot. Um, let's get some Payne's grey and mix it with that blue. You know, I keep saying this, I'll get some, I'll get some shots of my palette in there, if I remember. It'll happen one day. Okay, that's a bit of Payne's grey going on there. Yeah, that's good, nice, nice and dark. Okay, so there's absolutely no care going into this whatsoever. The only care going into it is that I don't want to look a complete idiot, but I, mean, I don't mind looking slightly idiotic, but a complete idiot? I don't think so. Okay, so we've darkened the top a bit. <clears throat> I'll be smoothing that all down in a moment, and I, I want to get a little bit more. Let's get a bit more dark just there, and I will be putting some white on. So let's let's say that the clouds, as they ended up at the end of part two, is one type of cloud, and what I'm doing now is the other type, which is um, a little bit more wild. It's more exciting, I think. And then you get, you know, you, can't, you get nice contrasts with a sky like this next to the light hitting the ground. I'm going to do some work down here as well. Um, that will come a bit later. I want to get the sky resolved first. 
and um, this is what I'm up to. Okay, so a little bit more there. Uh, I had some really nice comments today, and it was quite nice doing a premiere video. That's where you, you know, I sit there and I just wait for people to comment, and then you know, you can ask questions and I reply and all that sort of stuff. But I'm beginning to regret that it was such a short video, it was only just, I don't know, was it just over half an hour or something. Um, a little bit too short, I think. Um, and I, I, I will probably change the time. It was 11.45 uh, a.m. here in France. Maybe that's a little bit early for um, for the U.S. because obviously you know, the time difference is about I think a minimum of five hours for the East Coast. So uh, anyone else a little bit further to the left on the map, they're not going to know because they'll be deep, deeply asleep. Okay, so that's a little bit of red I've thrown in there now. And I know it looks a mess, it will, you know, it's going to look a mess for a while. Don't ever be afraid of the mess, because the mess can actually be quite interesting. Right, now that's even more interesting than interesting. I've just spotted something there. <clears throat> Sometimes you don't see them at the time, but when you put another colour over the top, you start to see any bristles that got left in the um, in the paint. This one's not just in there, I think it's paying rent. Let's just go slice it out. See, this is okay, a good time to show you how versatile and how flexible oil paint can be. So there we are, just annihilated a bristle there, but made an interesting mess on the um, painting. But of course, good old oil paint, it just goes away. And if you don't tell anyone, they never know. Right, so there we are. We've got a bit of dark sky down here, and I think we need a lot more, a lot more drama. Let's put a tiny stain on here. I think that's the end of that one. Right, next brush. <clears throat> okay, this is where we go a little bit silly now. We're going to go for the, um, well, it's not, oh, ah, before I do that, before I do that, I have to do something else. Okay, just checking my very big brushes. And the ones I've found are quite um, in a bit of a state. Oh, I've just found something I've been looking for for weeks. And dropping some stuff on the floor. I've been looking for this for a long time. This is uh, unbelievably useful object. Apart from cleaning your palette, it's um, it's good for putting gesso on canvas because you can apply it with that smoothly. Obviously, it would be lying down flat, but you can uh, you can apply gesso without brush marks. And uh, the other thing, of course, um, uh, what else is it good for? I'm sure it's good. Oh yeah, it's good for stripping wallpaper. Right. So, big brush. And this, and this is not the um, cloud thing that I do yet. That'll come in a minute. This is just, this is just, um, just to sort of take a few brush marks out. smoothed out the blue and the next thing I'm going to do is try to get this sky a little bit more fluffy fluffy and slightly more exciting a bit like the original that I was emulating which is this one now on the screen I won't get it exactly the same obviously but uh, we'll see what we get Okay. 
So, now, the trick, one of the tricks, maybe it's the trick, for getting clouds to look as though the wind is blowing them across the picture, is to paint them, I think, it's not just quickly, it's to do with the, the flick of the wrist. You've got to keep the, um, the colours clean. And you've got to keep them lively. I'll be putting some on with a palette knife in a minute. This is just to get uh, the character of the sky a little bit. Where I want my main whites, and I think possibly up there. That bit. I think the other sky was okay. It's just... Um, I don't know. Just didn't quite didn't quite do it for me. It was just lacking excitement. Somebody, um, well, that's the longest I've been quiet for a long time. Somebody um, asked me a question which, um, I, I, well, obviously I can only answer the question, you know, honestly. And that is, first of all, the question was um, that the person wanted to see a video of one of my uh, Zoom classes, but they weren't a patron, a patron rather, on my Patreon page, um, and they weren't able to see the class because um, they were working. Um, and I'm afraid at the moment the only thing I can say is that if you're not uh, if you're not a um, patron and you're not in the class, you can't really see the video. It wouldn't be fair to the other people because. They're, they're paying to sort of keep it as exclusive and um, but I may change I may change the way we do this um, at the moment the video is recorded via zoom onto my computer I then edit the vin uh, video and uh, I don't do much to it I mean I don't put any I don't particularly put any words on it I, I leave all the talking that I did in the lesson, obviously. Um, I just sort of snip out bits that may be a bit blank too long. And I also cut out the chatter because that's sort of between us. It's not uh, for general broadcast. Um, but I may change this uh, and say to people that the best thing to do maybe would be for them to record it on their own computers. Um, it will save me an immense amount of time. It takes a long time editing uh, videos. Um, it can take the best part of a day by the time I get to the end of it if I really want to, you know, make it look as slick as possible. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe it is better if people just record it on their own machine. I don't know yet. I'm just sort of with the idea. But it may happen that way, not sure. In which case, um, in which case I don't know because my mind's just suddenly shot off elsewhere. Right, so um, I'll get back to that in a minute, if I remember. Do my best. At the beginning of this uh, video you saw the cat wandering around outside my room. Um, I think I'll have to just give you a quick update on where she is now. So she's sitting there looking at the wall because this is a, an old French house 
and uh, the other side of this um, this wall is uh, a gap and then stonework that goes back probably 150 years or so, maybe more. And you get the odd mouse in there wandering about. And uh, she obviously likes to listen. She can't get at them, but she likes to listen. OK, now back to the painting. Um, I'm going to do some work along this this ridge here soon, not immediately. And then I think a little bit, I might make that tree slightly taller because I want to bring it closer to us. At the moment, it's either a very small bush or it's a long way away. I just want to, I wanted to sort of close in on it a bit. And what else? Maybe I'll do some more with the little, um, the little cops down here. I don't know, maybe. Uh, but let's go back to the sky again. So there we are, I've just chucked on a load of paint. And I'm going to chuck on, I use the word chuck on, because really that's all I'm doing. I'm just throwing the paint on there at the moment. There's no point in making it too finished before it's finished. So the next thing is to um, put some more white on there with a palette knife. And uh, that's what we're going to do next. Just to get some large white areas. Obviously I'm using titanium white, most people do. So I'm going to put some nice extra bits of white in a few places, I think just there. And I think we'll have one, another one there. Every time I disappear I wipe the palette knife. Otherwise there'll be It'll just all turn into the same colour. Going back to uh, what I was saying a few moments ago <clears throat> about people leaving nice comments on my YouTube channel, my experience is generally that, that people are polite and, you know, not, not saying stupid stuff. Because if, if anyone does say something rude or, you know, just a bit weird, because that does happen, um, I have filters on there that pick up all kinds of words that I've keyed in. I, th <laughs> I think of every possible insult that somebody could point in my direction and I put them in the, into the um, filter so that uh, they don't uh, get broadcast. So I, can then, I then have the option to uh, ban the person from my channel and they'll never see me again. And um, I've had to do that quite a few times. Uh, it's unfortunate that that happens, but you know, there are some people out there who, for some reason, uh, have got nothing better to do. But anyway, um, generally the comments are all very nice. It's a, a pleasant experience. So, and I hope it remains that way. Now then, I'm going to get a completely clean brush. It's quite a, well, I've got, I've got a choice here. I've got this great big enormous one here. Um, or I could just use one of these which has never been used. And I think, um, I think I might use the smaller one. And just see what happens. Good. Now I don't want to tone this slot down too much. Not that I'm wanting to tone it down at all really. All I'm wanting to do is blur it a bit. I 
I mean some bits I don't mind toning down but I do want a few sparkly bits on it and in fact maybe that's that's the height of my sparkle and in a moment I'm going to reach a level of excitement that you may not have experienced at least in the last five minutes hopefully and I'm going to put a little bit of red in it so the question is how do I go about this well I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do it with a palette knife I'm just going to get a red stain and mix it into some white with a little bit of blue so it's more it's going to be sort of a pinky lilac-y sort of red and not too much of it either noisy business painting especially when you when it goes wrong and you throw the brush across the room and it breaks something okay so tiny bit of sort of pinky lilac-y colour which I think might look quite interesting just a few dabs not sure I like these wispy bits at the bottom here I might, might do something about that and while I'm, I'm struggling to think what to talk about I don't think why I am, but I usually, I usually have no trouble. But, uh, could be because it's Friday. Maybe it's because that. that's it. I just want to relax and paint. Now that's an interesting effect there. That's quite a nice colour. I like it. Let's put a bit down here. Now because this stuff, all this here, is dry and that blue there is dry nothing comes off all the green along there that's dry I can put a color right down to the um, to the horizon there and then wipe back I think I might show you how to do that why not you see I treat paintings like this as a, um, not necessarily one I'll keep I might um, I might even paint over it I don't know probably not I don't know who knows um, but the, the sort of things that I can just sort of keep experimenting on and uh, showing you what to do so that's that's all part of sort of not getting too evol involved with your paintings so let's try this okay let's put that let's put that all the way along there okay so we lose we lose the blue on the horizon let's just smooth that a little bit like so now you have to remember well I have to you don't I have to remember exactly where everything is underneath that so there we are we've got a we've got a nice reddish glow on the horizon without having to go around anything carefully uh, to avoid it so there we go that's sort of interesting I think nice color A little bit of dark still left there okay now we get some paper and we go and look for all the things that we covered up and there's a, a bush over on the horizon there and we'll just take that back there like so in fact it's quite nice to leave some of that sky color on there it sort of sends everything further back okay and here obviously we've got this tree which is underneath there this is this is glazing basically so in other words I put a color on mostly oil not much paint and all I've got to do is just sort of wipe off like that and I can reveal what was underneath now I don't really care what happens with this tree at the moment because I'm going to make it bigger so I, I just want to know where it is 
and over here generally wipe that back let's do our best to keep out of the way okay so that nice misty effect sends the landscape further away even more how to paint perspective the simple way it doesn't get more simple than this I could take that right back just by getting some oil on here and wiping it through there and that will act as a thinner don't forget you don't need thinners turpentine is revolting stuff it's not good for you to breathe even the ones that don't have an odor um, because you can't smell it doesn't mean to say that whatever it is in it is um, not harming you so if you take away the smell it means it's it's in stealth mode okay so I've just gone back a little bit there I don't want to take too much off because it doesn't matter I, 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 sorry no it doesn't make sense I just like it so there if I use a bit of oil on this bush thing now see that comes back slightly stronger but I want it I want it stronger than that and I want it bigger so I'm going to increase that and then I'm going to start playing around with some other colours through the greens down here um, I think we'll just take the top off that it's got a little bit of that misty colour on it so I'm going to take that away and that will come back full strength like so just with a bit of oil on top okay yeah that's looking really uh, it was a little bit close before you know what I mean but it's definitely sunk back a bit bottom edge of it I think I will take it off because it just adds another dimension there we go yeah I like that okay so I'll go back to the clouds uh, in a moment in fact no I fibbed I'm going to go back to the cloud now very quickly because I don't like blobs I like things like that to be connected so that it flows through the picture I don't want things to look cut off in other words why would that why would that color be there but not connect to this color it's, it just seems more correct to do that okay so let's see got two shapes here that were a bit similar hate repeats see what I mean this and that repeat it's very subtle but there's your dividing line there's the bit that hangs down there's the bit that hangs down don't like that at all so we'll take away the bit in the middle and just do that to it and um, that should help it so as you as you paint keep your eye for, open for things like that also keep your eye open for things that you do accidentally that you like like as I go along here now I'm quite liking the, the effect it's it's giving so if I keep doing this you see I'm not, not doing anything so I don't have to do anything fancy all I've got to do is keep my eye carefully on what happens so a little bit of a shape there too I think right just gonna point the camera at the sky a little bit more right interesting shape in there makes me think I could turn that into a mountain sort of mist but it would be a really big mountain maybe it'd be just a little bit too big for this type of landscape I think it might be too big so I'll just lighten the top see it just takes a touch and this dark bit here maybe that's too dark let's do something there let's just have a shape see think of it as shapes don't think of it as cloud just shapes that need to all sort of work together and I'm going to add a little bit whoops a little bit of white up here because that shape is not pleasing can't explain it I quite I quite like all this stuff going on in here although there are some 
dark bits that I don't like, but generally I like that shape. I'll, I'll smooth that in a minute. But this shape here is just too, it's too follow me off the picture-ish. Hope that makes sense. What, what I want to do is not have any interest for the viewer outside the painting. So I want to keep, keep you in here. So I'll put something like that there just to stop you. It's visual coercion. So let's see now. Let's have a little wisp. A little wisp going up there. think a little bit a bit there and <clears throat> sometimes I think I talk too quietly sounds like I'm muttering to myself but I'm not really okay now but we'll, we'll have a little bit just up there too I think see when you think it looks like a cloud stop working on it Move away. Get yourself into a, a nice mood before you paint too, because if you're if you're happy, your memory works better. You have better access to stored memory when you're in a good mood. So back to the almost clean brush. Of course, nothing is nothing is particularly clean at the moment. There's paint everywhere as usual. So um, let's see. How much we talk about now? Um, oh yeah, while you're well, if you're still here and you like uh, my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I probably, now I, I might have put a reminder on the screen at the beginning, because I don't know until I'm editing it. So if it seems like I'm over asking you to subscribe, just ignore me uh, and subscribe. That's probably the best thing, isn't it? Um, I do forget to ask people sometimes. Some people um, say it right at the beginning of their videos, they say, smash that subscribe button, da -de da -de da um, I, I've never been one for particularly hard sell, but you know, if you do hit that button, it helps immensely. Um, and it costs nothing to subscribe. And if you're a painter and you want to learn a few tricks, why not learn them from me? And uh, while we're on that subject, why don't you book up for one of my uh, classes on Zoom. They're always on a Saturday um, and uh, it's really good fun. Uh, and if you don't believe me, best thing to do is to turn up and see. But it is, it's a, it quite often, it is a bit of a laugh. Now on the subject of laughing, okay, so here's Something that happened to me the other day, I was reading something on the internet and there, someone put up a joke and it was one of the funniest jokes I've ever heard actually. And um, maybe I can remember it. So I'll just sort of prattle on while I'm doing the sky. So there was this guy called Dave and he worked for a company and his boss was always listening to him chatting. And Dave was always saying about how he knew everyone. He knew all these famous people. So um, his boss, who had plenty of money, said, look, Dave, he says, look, is, there, is there anyone you don't know? He says, no, well, actually, I know pretty well everyone. He says, you know. So he said, well, do you know Tom Cruise? And he says, yeah, I know Tom Cruise. So his boss says, right, my private jet, 
off we go. Let's go to Tom Cruise's house. Let's see if he knows you. So they do. Get in the jet off they fly. And um, he ends up, let's say, I don't know where Tom Cruise lives, but let's say he's Los Angeles. I have no idea, but anyway. So they go to his house and he knocks on the door. Sure enough, Tom Cruise opens the door and says, Ah, oh, Dave, hello, how are you doing? Come in. Just about to have lunch. Let's catch up. So he's, he's, Dave's boss is absolutely staggered by this and they go in they have lunch with Tom Cruise. And they leave, then after an hour or so, they leave and he says, Right, well, let's try someone else. So he said, Done. Um, how about... Try to take the a famous person's name. So he says, OK, let's go and see... Um, you know the president? He says, yeah, I know, yeah, I know the pre I know Prez. He says, let's go and see the president. So they go to the White House. He walks straight up to the front door, knocks on the door, and says, uh, can, I have, can I have a word with the president, please? And they say, oh, yeah, yep, in you come. So he goes in and he says, hello, Mr. President, how are you? And he says, oh, Dave, nice to see you. Come in, we're going to have... Um, Afternoon tea or coffee. I don't know what you do in America, but uh, afternoon something. And this, this guy's Dave's boss is absolutely his socks are knocked off, as they say. He thinks, well, right, I've got to, I've got to catch Dave out. So he says, what about the Pope? So he says, yeah, I know the Pope. Oh my goodness! So he's, all right, off we go, off to the Vatican. So off they go to the Vatican and. There's so many people around, he can't, he can't even get across St. Peter's Square, so they, they skirt around the edge and he says, stick, stick with me, he says, I know most of the guards here, they'll let us in. So he goes and talks, eventually gets to the um, main gate and the guards say, yep, yep, you come in, you can talk to the Pope. So he, but only one of you. So, okay, so he goes up to talk to the Pope and uh, they have a nice meeting and Pope says, yeah, any time you're here, just drop in. And um, when he goes out, his boss is lying down on the ground. He's fainted. And uh, Dave goes over to him and he says to the people around, he says, what happened? What happened? He says, well, he was fine until somebody said, hey, look, there's Dave. But who's that guy up there with him on the balcony? Now, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I found that quite funny. And it's clean too. You don't need any swear words for that one. Anyway, it's, uh, I, it just made me laugh. And then I, I was painting, the whole point of this, is I was painting just afterwards and, and everything went right. I, maybe it's because, as I said, I, was, I put myself in a, in a happy mood and um, it makes you paint better. It's only a theory, you know. Although I think, I think it's true. I think it's true. If you're in a happy mood, not only do you do your tasks better, but um, they may, it helps make you learn. I've always thought this. I've always thought that in schools, that schools should be a happy place, if possible. Uh, because when you are happy, your chances are you will remember things because you are you relive something that is enjoyable and uh, that's just maybe I'm wrong I don't know what do you think as always just comment that's what the comments are for below What's, you know just comment away right so there we have I think a reasonable sky and Hardly any care taken. Now, I don't know. I don't know whether it's because I've done it many times or whether it's just that I'm enjoying myself. But whatever, it doesn't matter. If it works, it works. Now then. I'm going to do a little bit on the landscape below. Right, so what should we do? Well, I think the first thing we need is um, 
that's another brush that I've ruined. Um, I think the first thing is to make that tree a little bit bigger and possibly a little bit more interesting. Some of the questions that people ask me again, someone said, why don't you, um, or have I ever tried mixing um, sap green? What was it? No, did I ever think of using yellow mixed with phthalo blue to make my greens? Well, I suppose I could, um, but there's no real reason um, because this, these colours work for me. If I want, if I want a green, uh, sap green gives me my darks, and there has to be darks. Uh, this pale colour here is, is just called light green. Uh, it comes in a tube with light green written on it. I'll give you a little shot of that. Um, there. Uh, and that's ready-made. And when I mix the two together, I get variations of these greens. So I don't really have to uh, think about it too much. Um, I like to keep things as simple as possible. And that's what I do. Right, I'm just trying to find the brush that I want to use for that tree. Usually when I'm moving around in my studio doing stuff like this, I, I edit it out, but I don't think there's really any reason. It doesn't matter if you hear me walking about. But some people say they like to hear the sounds. Um, and why not? It's real life. Okay, so I've got a couple of brushes here. These are... Uh, this one came from... Uh, I, don't get, I don't get any um, money for saying this, but this comes from the Cultura shop. Hopefully that's going to come into focus. These are quite cheap. Um, not as cheap as, uh, as the standard ones that I use, uh, because it's a little bit sculpted. You know, it's got nice sort of, nice something. There's more quality in this one than there is in the, uh, you know, the hardware store brushes like this one. You know, these are, these are ridiculously cheap. Um, even though this one's smaller, it's probably more expensive. Plus, also, this is also... Also, this is also, uh, maybe I won't cut that out. Okay, this is also <laughs> from Cultura. Uh, and it's, it's really designed f not for detail. This is not a detail brush. This is a texture brush or laying on thick paint. I, I tend to use these for texture because the, because the brush is, it already looks like Keith Richards. No, it doesn't. It looks more like Rod Stewart for the haircut, but it's got that sort of uncontrolled uh, appearance to it, which is actually quite useful. So uh, if I get, I've got my red ochre, I just want to get some sap green. I could have sworn I had, oh here we are. Right, sap green. And quite often when I mix these colours together, I have to say you're not missing much if you don't see my palette, because it just ends up, you know, it's like very, very dark green. It's not exciting. The excitement happens as soon as it comes off the brush. Well, one hopes, anyway. So, not too sparingly with the paint. It's quite a, quite a nice lump of paint on that. And I just want to strengthen this tree and sort of make it dark again. So I'm going to just sort of I did a bit of work on this tree the last in the last uh, I mean in, the, in episode one of this saga. <laughs> uh, so what I did in that is completely ruined now, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully it'll um, it'll still look good. So I'm going to sort of fluff the edges a bit. I'm going to zoom in for you. see now you can paint you can paint a tree or a bush with a big brush without having to do lots of twigs and uh, you know all that sort of stuff it's just it's down to um, 
how fluffy you make the edges, I suppose. The fluffiness will give the appearance of light coming through the branches, like so. I'm quite pleased with that. But I want to be more pleased. And can you actually see on here, there's, a, there's this effect that I do quite often. I do this. And that is, I should get that down so you can see what I'm talking about. I always have to remember I've got to lock the camera when I do this. Sometimes I've worked on videos and turn my back on the camera and the camera's not being tight so it, it gradually drops down the picture. You don't see those videos. Now I really like that bush now. I'm glad I did this. I'm going to just increase the height a little bit up there. So now down here, I've got this thing. I really like this effect where you have a lump of trees, a lump or a copse or whatever you want to call it, with a few with a few trunks at the ends. There's one the other end as well. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to do something up on the hill here because I really want people to go to that. Um, and I've done all my sky behind it. I don't need to do any careful painting around anything. It's already there. I'm going over the top. So I'm, I'm going to put, call me Mr. Daring, I'm going to put another tree here, like so. I have no idea what species this is. I have no idea what model or how many pistons. It's just a tree. There we go. And it's floating in the air. And you may say, the old fool has lost it. And you may be right, but not today. What I'm going to do with that is give it a trunk. So in other words, you, you, uh, something I repeat this time and time again. My goodness, I must be so boring. But the reason I repeat it is so that people remember it. So you don't have to paint a tree from the ground up. You don't have to paint it as it grows. You paint it as you want it to be painted. So I've got this sludgy colour. I've got my very thin brush, which could do with cleaning, but it'll work, I think. And all I'm going to do is just add my tree trunk, same as I did down there, just a dark colour. Very, very slight. Doesn't have to be a great something great um, solid trunk because it's not a great big thumping tree. It's just a, a wispy type of tree, and I'm just um, just going to refine my brush a little bit more because I did leave a bit of paint in it and it's gone a little bit um, a little bit dry. Of course, when you, when, you, uh, when you finish with brushes, I mean, particularly, I don't know whether you want to do it with big brushes, I tend to get mine clean quite soon afterwards. But for something like this, uh, you can just dip it in a bit of oil and the oil will have the same effect pretty well as some um, turpentine. Okay, so just got that a little bit sharper at the end. And I'm just going to strengthen that. Now, you notice I'm not doing this. I'm not leaning on anything trying to get my hand dead still because I don't really care if it is still. What I want to do here is just... I could hold the brush right on the end. In fact, it's, it makes the line more interesting sometimes because if you've got a bit of a wobble, uh, it'll, it'll transmit to the end of the brush and you'll get an interesting tree trunk without even trying. So here, all I'm going to do is just sort of let that drop Like so. And then you get this, I don't know what it does, it just gives it an extra bit of life. It's something, it's something mimicking detail, because there is none. It's all blobs, blobbery. Right, so there's that tree, and we, we have no idea what, what type of tree, but that's one of them. 
So I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to do a little bit of work here. So I think I should probably shift the camera. Um, down here I've got this sort of dark tree stuff going on down there. I think it's a little boring. I think it needs a little bit, a little bit of solid in there, but just slightly darker. And let's just have something up there. Because that will exaggerate the feeling of distance behind it. Plus that little bit in there and that bit there. It just adds another layer, if you understand what I mean. I'm, I'm, I've always been fascinated by how you get perspective in painting. And I remember when I was a student, when I first sort of managed to get something that looked as though it did actually have a bit of depth in it, I was really over the moon. I thought, wow, it's that easy. And um, it, it is, really, when you think about it. There we go. So these, these, this colour that I'm putting on is a slightly more brown, a brownie green, probably almost brown. Uh, I might add a bit of green to it, but it's, uh, it's sort of having the desired effect anyway. However, I've just spotted something that uh, I do go on about quite often, I think, and that is I don't like repeats, and these are repeating, one, two, three. And um, I, I sort of fight with myself so that I don't do this. And uh, obviously I need to fight a bit harder. So I'm going to make the, um, the first tree a little bit taller. The reason that I choose this one and not these two is because I like this stuff here, this sort of um, illusion of detail over there. And I don't want to lose that. So I'm just going to make this one just a little bit a little bit taller. Just a few smudgy bits. I think that's all it needs really, just to break that um, that trio. There we are, and I think I'm happy with that. If not, I'll come back to it in a moment. Um, and let's just continue with this brown colour. I'm going to leave some of these trees exactly as they are, because it's sort of, you know, it's quite a, a nice green, but, um, and it's further away. This here is closer to us. Do I need to reposition my camera? No. Okay. So I'm going to let this, this bunch down here be the same species as that. So I'll just add a little bit of brown to it. Let's have another slightly taller one there. Just because it's, it's the only reason I do that is because it's sort of interesting. I like all the, um, at this stage of a painting particularly, I like all the textures that are starting to build up. Plus the paint underneath of course is dry, so there's very little chance of me actually destroying anything. And then we'll bring the brown down here a little bit, just a few, not too much, because I want to keep, I want to keep some of the texture that I put in there uh, in episode two, I think. Okay, so that's, that is good. The next thing that's really bugging me now, I am bugged, is this ridge. It's a little bit too, too harsh. And uh, I think I need to soften it. Um, a little bit. I won't go over the top, but I just need to drag, I think, a little bit of the light colour over onto the slope below. Now, um, I'm not going to use, or am I? No, I'm not. I'm not going to use a big brush for that. I'm going to find another, in fact, I'll use this one, the one I showed you a few minutes ago, my Cultura brush, that one. And um, it's just about the right size to get in there. And, do what I want to do. So uh, here we are. Light green. Light green is the only colour, although will I? Let me just have a little little mental discussion with myself. Might even get some yellow ochre in that. I wonder. 
it's not a colour I use much, but it's um, it can have quite a nice effect. It's got a it, it comes over as quite golden on uh, next to these colours. So I'll apply this carefully. So a little bit on the top, and then we just break it into the other side very very slightly, and the effect that this that will have is it will soften this sort of weird crest that I've got just so that it's it's that's it that's exactly what I wanted so now it looks as though you can actually walk over that without breaking your legs so I've got this very subtle change here and I've got a few contrasty bits there and I'm just wondering whether to leave them or soften them as well. I think I might leave them and then just bring this down here just a touch. Now this this bit of light there I quite like that and I think I might lead it up into there so that it connects and that will I think just be interesting to look at. And you can see now that, um, I mean, there's, there's obviously, uh, you know, a little bit of paint on that, but it's not much and um, there's no oil added. So I can, I can touch that on there and get some nice little highlighty bits. Or, as some people call them, I used to, when I was referring to photographs for magazines, we would refer to them as catch lights. A little catch light, just to give a bit of twinkle. Okay, now down here we've got a slope. Now this, the problem with the slope, normally I would say I've got to have something there because I don't want people dropping off the picture. Now, will people drop off? I'm not sure that they will because I think it's quite, it's sort of quite interesting over the other side there. So I'll just carry that on as if it doesn't matter. And in fact, let's have a, so have a couple of light bits poking up, more catch lights. The thing about landscape, texture, texture, texture. You've got to add texture. That's where the interest comes from. Well, apart from composition, of course, but, you know, it's got to be an interesting composition. But the more you can get these little, you know, people will say, oh, it looks so realistic, but it isn't, you have to remember, it is not detail. It is the illusion of detail. You don't have to get a little brush and paint every blade of grass. You can, if you've got a brush like this, or, or like the, um, the scratchy one I showed you, this one, uh, you can get that effect just with a dab. And I have to say, it's much more pleasing when it just suddenly appears. Just wondering where to put one up. Just another little spark of light just in there. You see there's paint there but it's not coming off because it's so um so thick so i'm just going to add a little bit more just to the tip so that i can get a little little bit of something just there yeah that, that seems to describe the landscape quite well so the hard ridge has been toned down, I'm going to tone it down a little bit more, and I'm adding light, but I'm, I'm breaking the light so that it's got more of a curve to it. Now, down here, let's have the illusion of some, I don't know, some weeds, a bit of weedery. Okay. I think that is a vast improvement on how it looked. Right, over this side here I'm going to add even more texture and this is just, I'm not actually sort of, how do we, how do we explain this? I'm not painting in this in the sense of you know applying the brush and sweeping on it, I'm touching it so it's just a touch with the brush over here just to, uh, you know the same sort of thing just get a few catch lights in it don't overdo it though. Don't 
don't suddenly think, oh, I've got to have a catch light, catch light, catch light, all the way across there. Phew. No, don't want to do that. You want to say enough and then stop. I, now, how would I, uh, here's, a, here's a way to describe what I'm suggesting. Okay, if, the, if someone is telling you something and you suddenly understand what it is they're talking about, then you've had enough of that, that bit of narrative. It's like nagging. If, I go, if, you, if you keep going, it's like nagging the paint. Don't nag it. Make it. Let it say what it wants to say and then let it stop. Nobody wants to be nagged. Okay, a bit more light at the top there. And I think that may be it for this side of the painting. Not sure what I'm going to do for the other side, but it'll be, I think, quite brief now. We're almost at the, um, almost at the end of this one, I think. Uh, while I've got this, though, I wonder... Let's just see what I can get away with over there on that hill. So I'm going to zoom you in a bit. So there, there is this hill, and I'm not sure. I mean, it looks okay in my camera. It looks better, um, actually, you know, in paint. But let's see what we can do. Um, I'm going to uh, using the same brush, and also I might use a palette knife as well in a moment. I'm just going to add some of the same colour that we've got, you know, down over here. I just want to put a few bits in the distance just to sort of let this hill have a bit of... I don't know. What's it going to have a little bit of? It's going to have a little bit of something going on without going too far. How about something at the top of the hill that's just catching some light up there? You see, if you don't, if you don't experiment, you don't know. I'm not quite sure. I think this will come out okay. Just have a little bit of light there. Very, very small amount. It's an interesting hill. I mean, it was it was a lump of trees, but I think it's turned into a hill now. Let's just see what happens if I do that. Oh yeah like that. In fact, I'm going to leave it like that. Almost. Not quite. I'm going to just put some more light there to break the line. It's okay to put a, a line in a picture like that, but like I said, break it a bit. Make it more interesting. I think a few few bits at the bottom there. Okay, so now you've got this feeling of something in the background, some kind of weird hill. We get these, it's, this could be England, we get these um, what are called barrows, ancient burial mounds. Maybe not as big as that, but they are quite interesting. I've seen a few. Now, there we go. Quite like that. Let's just pull the eye back this side. Just a few little hints of light catching trees. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Now, OK, before I get over to the other side, I'm going to be a little bit daring. Can you imagine? This is my idea of daring. What, a, what an exciting life. OK, so let's... Um, whatever turns you on, I suppose. OK, let's just go back to that for a minute. And what I want to do there, again, with this light green, is just a touch or two at the base of that tree, just like that. Again, it adds depth. Suddenly you've got something growing in front of the tree in the place where nobody could get a mower. OK, so... <laughs> So we're, we're, I'm, I'm sort of looking for that thing about nature. It's not awfully tidy. So 
So you just throwing in the odd little thing like that can have quite an interesting effect. Right, time to stop on that. I know that if I go any further, I'll just go too far. So I'm going to just work across the painting. Let's go to the next lump of trees. You may have noticed on some, sometimes it's a lump, sometimes it's a clump. Today it's a lump. Okay, so down there now, let's have a little look, see if I can do anything with that. It may, may not be a, mu a, a much. It may not be much. Okay, so what have we got? And have a lot of the camera. Yeah, good. Right, so uh, I think same brush. And all I'm going to do is just a few little bits, literally spots, just spots of paint, plus that bit. Let's have just something there catching the light. And let's just stretch it a bit. Yeah, that's working. A little tiny bit of light there. And then I think that could be it. Except that we have the extreme bottom corner down there and I think I have to do something there. So, more camera moving. So what we've got there, right on the edge of the, I think almost, let's give you a bit more of that, right on the edge of the picture on the right. These are, there's, there's no, how can I put it, no conscious painting happened in that spot. What it is, is just texture of paint in oil. Maybe that's all you need. I mean, sometimes that's all I need anyway, I just don't. If it if it seems to work, then I'll you know that's when I will stop, and it's when I think people should stop. If you if you achieve the effect, leave it. Okay, let's see what we can do here. We've already got this light bit. I'm going to just make it a little bit more, a bit more in your face. And then I think here that's actually white showing through on the board. I'll just put a bit, of, a little bit of paint over that. And then a few dabs here. Okay. And I think that, I think that is all I'm going to do there actually. Just knowing when to, as I say, as I repeat and repeat and repeat, knowing when to stop. Um, I don't know when to stop here though. <laughs> Um, I, I, I like the effect that's going on in there, but I don't think it will hurt. Just to do something like that. And only that bit. I won't do any more on that tree. Okay. Well, I think we're almost there, you know. So here's, um, here's a view from the front. Just move the camera for you a little bit. There's the bottom, I think. That's about there. And there's the rest of the sky. Who knows? Um, maybe I'll come back to it and uh, do a bit more work in the future. But for now, I'm just going to let it dry. Reasonably pleased. I think it's gone quite well. I know this has been a long video and if you're here, thank you very much and um, uh, I hope you continue to come back. So before I go, just another reminder, sorry to go on about it, uh, please subscribe if you like this and um, leave any comments and what else. Um, lessons, uh, I really enjoy doing the Zoom lessons, all the details are below for, for um, logging on if you're interested and uh, maybe I'll see you in the future and maybe we'll get to chat.
just uh, walk around the room a bit from a distance, have a quick look at it. Am I happy? I'm a happy bunny. Okay, thanks for being here and see you on the next video. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.